Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of my wonderful brothers and sisters in Christ, whenever you're watching this. Thank you so much for joining us for another daily devotional. The current theme of Jesus Is has been so, so powerful, and it's been really amazing to hear how God has impacted people's lives in such a wide variety of ways. If you've missed out on others in the series, or you just stumbled across this today, and you'd like to see more devotions in general, then feel free to head over to audaciouschurch.com forward slash devotionals, and you can view older content there, as well as sign up right there for future daily releases. That's audaciouschurch.com forward slash devotionals. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Adam, and along with my lovely wife, Jay Soon, I have the utmost pleasure of looking after all sorts of areas of new to faith in Manchester. From people that are committing their lives to Christ and getting baptised, to those responding to Jesus for the first time in a church service, and all the way through to the amazing discipleship course, Alpha, where everyone is welcome. And yes, that includes everybody watching right now, no matter what faith level you are at. Honestly, it's a true joy to be serving in the house of the Lord. All the glory to our God in heaven. So today, I'm just going to share with you a little bit about how Jesus is, dot, 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 my restorer. Jesus is amazing in how he gently restores us when we've fallen. Just a bit like we are called to do so with other people, like it mentions in Galatians 6 verse 1, Amplified Version, which says, You who are spiritual, that is you who are responsive to the guidance of the Spirit, are to restore a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with a sense of superiority or self-righteousness. Amen to that. I think that's something for all of us to remember. Okay, so Jesus is my restorer. When I was down, when I'd fallen, when I was wrapped up in the world, he redeemed me, he saved me, he healed me, he realigned me, he made me whole again. He completely restored me. At the same time, he also made himself very known and very present in my life when I'd otherwise shut him out. And what a great reminder that is. I think many of us need to be reminded of how God is present in our lives from time to time. If you go to the Old Testament and you read the book of Joshua, especially chapters 6, 7 and 8, you'll see the perfect example of what happens when, like I did, you receive God's blessing, something goes marvellously well, and then you become complacent and feel you can do things alone because, hey, it's easy, God's going to step in. And ultimately, you land in failure. Then, though, you do get to see how God can turn things right around for good if you consecrate yourself, cleanse yourself, humble yourself, put everything down before him in obedient reverence. He's not actually asking for much, but for some reason, to us, it feels like so, so much. In the book of Joshua, there's a battle, one that most of you will be familiar with, where the walls of Jericho come tumbling down after following God's exact instructions. The army marched, blew its trumpets, and then, at the appointed time, raised a war cry and claimed the victory that God had promised them. That's what God does. He promises victory if we follow his instructions. He makes it as clear as day, so how could we possibly go wrong? Right? Well, as happens in life, complacency, arrogance, disobedience, and maybe even just a little bit of rebellious nature and various other factors start to creep in. And in this instance, in the book of Joshua, a battle commences at a place called Ai, and it's rather disastrous. Do go and read those chapters 6 through to 8 in Joshua for more details. Anyway, after a process of repenting, asking God for forgiveness, getting themselves realigned to God's will, the same battle takes place once more, 
except with a twist. God was at the centre and used what they'd done before in failure to bring about huge success. He used what had gone before and made it right. Our God, he takes things and he turns them around, but we must consecrate ourselves. We must make ourselves submissive to his ways, allowing him to work in and through us in every way. It's imperative. Believe me when I say it is so, so much better to humble yourselves before the Lord than to wait stubbornly and have him humble you first. Honestly, I can tell you from first-hand experience, put it all down before God. You will be all the better for it, I sincerely promise. Now, that situation in Joshua is all very good and well, but you might be wondering, Adam, how on earth does this relate to today's devotion? Well, sadly, it echoes how I was many, many years ago. Well, not even that many years ago, many years ago. God had helped me overcome many battles. He'd blessed me in many ways. I mean, I'm actually only alive today because of God. But that's for another devotion. The problem is that one particular blessing that was given to me back at the end of 2012, I took that blessing and gradually, gradually, gradually made it my own thing, getting more and more wrapped up in the world of media and in the world in general. You see, if you read John chapter 17, Jesus specifically talks about how we are in this world, but not of this broken world. Just like him, we are set apart. However, me, I was doing that one foot in the boat, one foot on the harbour mistake that many of us can slip into. Once that boat starts being pulled away by the waves and the tide, you can just about keep it together. Well, until eventually all your balance goes and you land in the depths. That boat for me was slowly drifting away over a period of seven years. And near the end of 2019, that's when I landed in the depths and everything washed away. I could have been wise. I could have paid attention to the signs over those seven years. I could have humbled myself, brought everything back to God. However, I was blinded and deafened by arrogance. I'd wasted seven years of my life for nothing. I'd put health, work, marital, family situations all at risk over ultimately nothing. And then it was all gone. What a waste. Or at least that's what I would think. Then, in early 2020, Jay Soon and I were sat in the morning service at Audacious Church, and we heard one of the pastors from the front talking about how they felt a word from God drop onto their heart for someone in the auditorium right there and then. God was saying that someone that day was feeling like they'd wasted many, many years and lost everything. But God was saying, do not fear, do not be disappointed, because he was going to show them the right way. He was going to restore everything and use it for his greater plans and purposes. Hallelujah. How fantastic. Can you imagine at the time how I felt? Well, actually, I have to admit, rather than joy, I was a bit bitter. It was more a feeling of, well... Well done, whoever that is, because it's certainly not me. God can't be talking about me. I feel crushed. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing how even a slight touch of bitterness within you can prevent you from listening to God? How many people that really need healing sit there and think, it's not them that God has that special message for? Or how many that are in financial strain fail to believe that a word of knowledge spoken to them relates to their breakthrough simply because of the suffering they've been going through for so long? There are so many different examples. Pastor Jensen Franklin says 
that when God allows you to go through a storm, it isn't to destroy you. It's to show you how good he is. Now, looking back at that situation, a key verse really sticks in my mind. Joel chapter 2, verse 25. This is the ESV version. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent among you. The message version of that even adds, you will know without question that I am in the thick of your life, that I am your God. Yes, your God, the one and only real God. How great is that? How great is our God? If you read Malachi chapter 3 verses 11 and 12 in the New King James Version, you can even find more goodness from our God. He says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all the nations will call you Amen. For you will be Amen. That right there is our God. That word for me at church was indeed for me, even if I didn't realize it at the time, even if I felt bitter. God was going to restore to me the years that the locusts had eaten, make sure I knew he was God and that he was in the middle of everything and prevent the devourer from ever destroying the fruit of my ground again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Around four or so months later, God started to use some of the skills and talents he'd graciously developed within me over that seven-year period of, as Pastor Glynn so perfectly puts it, my slow drift in the wrong direction. God used it. Years later, he's now using those skills. He's now using all of the skills I was given and developing brand new ones to open up new doors and reveal whole new avenues of ministry for me to explore with his guidance. Not my will, but his. All for the glory of his kingdom, the way it was meant to be all those years ago when he first opened the door for me. When you're faithful with a little, he'll grant you a lot more to be faithful with. Today then, I would really, really love to stress to those watching this right now that God is not done yet. He is there right in the middle of your situation helping you through whatever storm you're facing. And he will, not might, not maybe, not perhaps, he will restore the years the locusts have eaten. God's grace will get you through. Jesus is my restorer. And he's also your restorer. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Thanks for watching today. Have a truly blessed day and rest of the week and hope to see you again very soon. Bye for now.